Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Will Motivation. And today we're talking about my advice on the number one way for you to get started investing in real estate. Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Will Motivation, here to actually respond to our first contest winner, Nicholas James. He actually did a nice video, which is the subject of today's video. Um, but he did a nice video that was inspired by our contest talking about uh, real estate and he actually has a duplex where he rents out half of the duplex that he lives in so check out this video from Nicholas and I want to thank Nicholas and make sure you give me your t-shirt size <clears throat> and your address best way to do it is go to willmotivation.com and put your uh, information in there your address and everything and then I'll be able to get the t-shirt to you so if anybody else is interested in winning a free t-shirt um, with the new will will motivation and knowledge junior P showing the t-shirt but anyway if anybody's interested in winning one of those t-shirts all you have to do is send me a video of your supercar um, your dream car that that you purchased and you want to show it to the will motivation nation and um, you just do a video of it talk about um, the car um, what you do for a living you know all that good stuff and um, send it in to me through email and just send me a link put the video up on YouTube and send me a link to get at willmotivation.com that's G-E-T at willmotivation.com or if you don't have your dream car yet but um, you've been inspired by something some content that I've done on my channel just do a video talking about um, what has inspired you and give us an inspirational moment uh, or, or nugget from your life that we can share with the audience. If we like it, if it's good quality, we'll post it on our channel. So without more further ado, let's get into this video from Nicholas James. Thanks. Hey guys, hope everybody is doing good. Today I'm making a video about my duplex and renting out the bottom half. And this video is actually inspired by Will Motivation. I wrote it up there. Um, He's got his own channel that he makes a lot of uh, great videos about real estate, how he's made a lot of money, and how he affords this crazy Lamborghini that he just upgraded to. He's actually, the previous Lamborghini that he had, the Gallardo, is the one that I want to get. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be the same exact one because he's already sold it and it's probably since then passed on to someone else. But yeah, so he's got the, the car that I, I wanted previously and then he upgraded to something even crazier. But anyways, um, so yeah, he's running this little contest about motivating other people and things that inspired you and you know mainly it was supposed to be you had an option of talking about like a car that you got and then showing that off and explaining it or just something to inspire others because his channel is about motivation and in particular um, I thought this would be great because him and I both have some form of real estate uh, investments and his is obviously way more he's got like 20 around properties or something like that it's crazy but I'm on my first one, and we are just now going to be paying off this house completely at the end of this year. Um, we got like 20000 left. We're just going to transfer a huge boatload of money to the principal because uh, we've been saving a lot, and we've been, we've been smart with our money. So, But I want to talk about the tax advantages and a couple of stories that um, people have told us. And, you know, they, I don't think they mean harm by telling us these stories, but... Um, I'll get into that later. So, yeah, so the tax advantages. So, based on the square footage of what we're running out, our total house is like 1,800 square feet, and the rental side of it down below us is like 800 square feet, and then there's also like a laundry room area that's shared and everything. But that 800 square feet plus some of that laundry room area is completely right offable. So, like about 40% of our entire home is right offable. And when I say that, um, right offable. I don't know if that's even a word, but and when I say that, I mean it's going to help us tremendously to pad the income tax that we'll have to pay. So, like, like I said here, we got utilities and your disposal. So, your water, gas, electric, garbage, recycle, anything that would entail uh, a bill like a utility bill of some sort or a disposal bill, you're going to go to write off half of that bill. Um, so, internet and cable TV, we just upgraded to one gig. Uh, what is this? One gig fiber internet. They call it fiber. They had the fiber line just coming in. And it's absolutely crazy. And that's $20. We wouldn't have ever got that if we didn't have this rent. We were paying $65. We were content. 
with the speed, but now we have over 10 times the speed that we had before, and it's being shared some with the render, but like our speed is crazy much faster, and half of that is going to be written off uh, on our taxes. Repairs pertaining to rented area or shared area, and I have the shared area underlined for a reason, so renting, or that, repairs uh, uh, are going to be on her side of the duplex, or below us, are going to be 100% off right, like 100% off, 100% a write off. I don't know why that was so hard to say. 100% a write off. Um, and then the shared area as well. So like if our driveway needs to be repaired, right? And if she were to park in our driveway or um, some sort of shared walkway where she's gonna be going in and out of, that is actually a write off as well. So that's huge. Um, if we ever need a new driveway, I know like our brick wall on the driveway started to get cracked a little bit. That'll be a write off for us. Property taxes, insurance, and interest on loan or loans. If you took out like a home equity line of credit to do some repairs or something, that would be right off. Half of that. Uh, services. This is one that I think a lot of people uh, underlook because lawn care. Like I hate doing lawn care, so I'm gonna be able to write off half my lawn care. If we need to hire a cleaning company, like we were gone or whatever, and I wanted this cleaning company to clean my half and her half, half that would be written off. Basically, anything you can think of that would benefit her could also benefit you and then it'd be half a tax right off as well so getting into this don't let people tell you about their rental horror stories or try to talk you out of doing real estate um and there's a story behind this so when i first met my wife now she wasn't my wife then um we got married bought a house and like i started the business and she started a new career all at, like the same time it was crazy but yeah, so at that time, I went to her grandma's, and we were talking with some people there, and um, one person in particular was telling us all these horror stories, and I've heard it before, but it was really kind of weird hearing it from a family member, because it was the first time I heard something from, well, I'm going to be a family member that uh, didn't support my idea. Like, for the most part, people have supported my idea. I mean, I mainly only just associated with my parents, but they were saying, you know, one mistake, and this can happen, or you know, this can happen or this can happen. Like, they just listed all these reasons, and I was like, wow. It's like, well, have you rented before? Like, have you had a renter? And they said, no. So, you actually just got done making a good point or starting to talk about a good point here, which is these horror stories that people have about being a landlord or being a property owner and renting out stuff. I'm sure there's horror stories for people that do flips and people that do um, rentals. But man, you're making a really good point because, and it's funny because the person that was talking about these horror stories, they don't even own any property. And to be the, to be honest with you, that's one of the main things that kept me out of real estate for the longest time is because I thought that it would be such a horror story to be dealing with tenants and dealing with people that I just didn't want to do it. And I didn't, I didn't want to deal with all that. So a long time I stayed out of real estate, but in reality, um, for every horror story somebody could tell you, I could tell you 10 success stories. Or I could tell you my own horror stories, but at the same time, the reason why I do this is to get ahead. So if you're thinking about um, getting ahead utilizing real estate, that's the bottom line. So you just make sure your numbers are good. And you're just gonna have, you're gonna have to deal with some things as a business owner. Um, but get over it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, don't worry about it, don't let it stop you. Um, and when the things happen, get over it. Handle it like, like a professional and keep it moving. So, great point, and uh, I'll let you finish talking. And I was like, well, don't you think it's gonna be different for everyone? I mean, yeah, I can understand there's common generalities, but don't you think it's gonna be different? Don't you think that maybe I'll run things differently? Maybe if I knew these people and I trusted them and you know, because you can get vibes, you can feel people out. Like if you're talking to people, you can get an idea. I mean, is this person straight? Are they going to pay me? You're not going to be 100% correct always, but you know, for the most part, you can. And if my renters didn't pay, there is obviously some common law practices that you have to follow. But I just want to let other people talk you out of doing something like this. If you're going to buy a house, the best way, in my opinion, to get into your first home is to do a shared living area. It doesn't even have to be a duplex. Like as long as they have a separate entrance down to a living area or at the side of you or somewhere in the house where they can just go and do their own thing give them their own kitchen bathroom 
hell, even if you don't want to have your own kitchen, I mean, it'd be nice to have your own bathroom or something, but you could still do this. I mean, you could still rent off up to half of your home on something like this, and that's, that's huge. And it'll help you out substantially. I mean, we pay, we're, we charge here six fifty a month, and that's really reasonable here, but right now that is way more than half our mortgage, like after everything, after, I mean, now it's probably like 60 to 70% of our mortgage. Uh, before it would have been closer to half because we had the private mortgage insurance what we just uh, took off because we had to wait five years but anyways I would do it um, and then also if you're looking at flipping um, kind of like what Will does but he does more rentals I think he keeps most of his stuff and rents more I'm, I know he has done flips but check out this book it's flipping fixing and flipping real estate I gave this a read and it's actually the first real estate book that I've read and it is awesome. If you're going to be doing that sort of thing, which I kind of want to dabble into, um, that is a great book. So I'll post the link to Amazon for that. But hopefully this helps you out and hopefully you don't let other people judge you and have those judgments, you know, actually wear you down because it's not worth it. We've had four runners now. They've all worked out. And they absolutely love it. Like, we're not, we're not like these money-hungry, greedy guys. We just, like, you can't get a tiny, tiny home here. Like, the smallest home you can get was like a 1,000 square feet. I mean, we use like 800 or something. So we figured, well, we could just get a bigger home and we can share this. Like, we don't have to have all this wasted space downstairs. We can share it. And that's what we ended up doing. And it's worked out well for us and it's worked out well for them. So, yeah, hopefully this helps you out. And have a good one. So, we want to thank Nicholas James for his submission to the Will Motivation t-shirt contest. Of course, he's our first winner. Um, but I thought I would add my two cents into his two main points from his video. One being tax write-offs and then the other being um, horror stories. So, I've got both. <laughs> I got a horror story related to tax write-offs, as a matter of fact. I got a story for everything. But let's let's see. So his the tax write-offs that that he talked about um, were right on point. Um, basically, if you have expenses related to you doing business to make money, then those things are typically tax write-offs, unless unless those expenses um, are in the form of some type of asset asset that you acquire, like equipment, um, you know, cars and trucks and stuff like that. Those aren't direct write-offs unless you lease them. 100% to the business, then um, in that case, they could be a 100% tax write-off if you're using them 100% for the business. But anyway, um, those are valid considerations, and sometimes the things that you're spending money on for doing business sometimes are, are benefits to you um, in, in your everyday life or the, at the development or growth of your business. Uh, or your property, the value of your property, for example. Maintaining the lawn keeps your property value up or your curb appeal up. So these are all good things, man. And um, and yeah, I write, I have a lot of tax write-offs related to my rentals. Um, when I sell, when I do a flip and then I make a profit on the flip, I have to pay taxes on the on the profit from those flips. And I have to take pay taxes on profits from my rentals, but usually, um, the way things work out, it doesn't, when I'm, for my rentals, the taxes don't end up being that bad at all. Like, usually I'll get so many tax breaks. But I have accountants that do that and I'm not a tax expert. And that leads me to, the, to my first horror story. <laughs> I've actually been audited uh, several times, back to back. Back to back to back. So, so I've been audited, um, when I say back to back, I got audited for one year. And the audit, then they came in and audited me. And that same audit, they pulled up some previous years. I got audited for two or three years, all at once, very stressful. Then the following year, they audited me again, I guess to make sure I was doing everything right. And, you know, luckily I had accountants, and a, I had an accountant and I had a bookkeeper for years. So when I got audited, I guess who I called? I called my accountant, my tax accountant, and I called my bookkeeper y'all get my stuff together I'm getting audited and so my accountant the accounting firm that I use they represent me so 
that's a lesson in this video is if you start making some significant amount of money, I would say once you start making with your business maybe six figures or beyond, you might want to look at getting an accountant, um, a good reputable accounting firm, not just like one individual person that can disappear and leave you high and dry. I would recommend you get an accounting firm that has experience representing people in audits and doing a good job, has a good reputation. So, um, so anyway, it, it, it turned out to be okay. I basically just had to pay taxes on um, one bank account that I had my accountant, my bookkeeper didn't catch. Um, so I just paid taxes on that. It wasn't really a big deal. And then the following year, I think I was good. And then everything was fine. They haven't, they haven't audited me since. But I restructured my businesses as well. So, so less likely I would get audited because I split my businesses up. So anyway, um, horror stories, man. Let's talk about landlord horror stories. And I've got a couple, I got a couple of horror stories that I'm gonna tell you guys. But at the end of the day, um, I'm not in this business for, for the fun of it. Now flips, flips can be fun, but dealing with people for rentals, I don't consider that a whole lot of fun. Um, but uh, with the flips, I haven't had any horror stories doing flips. So let's, let me get that clear. Like if you do your numbers and you're conservative, do quite well with very little drama doing flips and, and that's been the story for me with rentals I've had some horror, your horror stories where I've had to evict two or three people um, and but the eviction process once I got into it was really simple it's like two weeks in two weeks you get like a court date you go to court the judge is not trying to hear any dumb stuff <laughs> like basically at least where I'm where I am in Ohio I mean, we went before the judge, and the judge was like, you got anything to say? All right, you got so, a certain amount of time to get out of the house unless the landlord lets you stay there for a little longer or something like that, you know, it was real quick. So once I learned how to do the eviction process, it's not something I dread anymore. I, I mean, I dread not getting paid, but um, I don't dread going through the eviction process because it's really pretty simple. Um, and then, and I, find, I found an eviction lawyer when I was at court, I saw this, lawyer representing other people and I just stepped to him and I was like hey uh, do you have a business card I, I'm a landlord I got several properties um, maybe you can represent me in the future because you know let him do it you know if anything was to come up I got a lawyer representing me so I found a lawyer by going there and he, he has represented me on a couple of other uh, eviction cases so evictions are not that bad even though that would be what somebody might consider a horror story and be like oh you gotta evict people and it's something I was worried about but once you go through it, it's not that bad. Uh, other horror story, man, I, I've had that, the phone calls in the middle of the night where I had a, a lady that was renting a place, a house from me, and somebody kicked in her front door. And so I had to, you know, go over there and secure the door. Then I had to call somebody the next day to fix the door and then put like a security, <laughs> like basically like a, a two by four on the door so nobody could kick it in. Now. My instinct was telling me that it was some domestic stuff going on, like it was her boyfriend that uh, kicked in the door because she didn't seem all that shook up when I went over there. She was kind of just like on the phone talking to her friend or something. I was like, Man, this is real strange. But anyway, that's the same person I had to be uh, Another horror story. Now, it wasn't so bad though. You just call people to handle the problem. Like, you know, if you can't handle it yourself, you just call. You have a list of people that you call to handle certain things. Um, so once you got a good list, nothing to worry about. I'll give you another um, horror story. Uh, so I had the eviction. I had somebody kick in the door. Oh, I had a property that <laughs> in the same property, a couple of bad things happened. When I was when I first got the property, the pipes froze up. So basically, somebody left water in the pipes and moved out, and it got below it got, it got below freezing. And they didn't have any heat on in the house and the, and the pipes had water in them and when the when the water freezes and expands it can crack the um, plastic PVC pipes and the plumbing in the house and in this particular house man um, a lot of the pipes got cracked and this has happened in several of my houses but in this particular house I didn't know what was going on but I turned the water on and I didn't see any leaks inside the house and I left and then I got a call from a neighbor or somebody and they were like 
yo, you might want to come check out this house because the house did not have a basement. It was on a concrete slab and water was flooding the yard from, un from water coming up underneath the foundation of the concrete block, you know, that the concrete uh, slab that the house was sitting on. So you imagine, I just bought this new this house that I was getting ready to rehab and turn the water on and I got water flooding the yard. So I was, I was, that was one of my most fearful moments in buying a property. Um, but it turned out that the leaks were above ground for the most part. Um, well, actually all of it was, all of the leaks were above ground. And um, we just had to find them, reroute some plumbing that, that was going underground. We re re rerouted the water plumbing inside the walls and in the attic. And we put some heated insulation on them and everything. So we fixed it. I just thought I had to find the right person for the job who wouldn't kill me and charge me too much. But it could have been one of those situations where if you didn't know the right people, it could have got real expensive. Um, and in that same house, I had some renters in there. They had some pets and the pets were not very clean and the pets got fleas and the fleas got heavily infested into the house and then all of a sudden they wanted to move out real quick and uh, I think the reason why they wanted to move out real quick is because they, the house was infested with fleas so I had to call an exterminator. Luckily it wasn't bed bugs or anything like that and I haven't had to deal with that but, um, but yeah. So you just call the right people man. When these things happen you gotta have a, a list of go-to people to handle certain situations that won't kill you in expenses. Um, and always have some money to set aside to be able to handle these things. Um, so don't worry about it too much if you have uh, horror stories and things pop up because for every horror story, I can tell you you know, how much profit I made on that flea house, for example. On that flea house, I turned around and sold that house. I bought it for one, 18 or 120 and we sold it for 170 you know what I'm saying? so there was profit in that house um the other house where the lady had the door kicked in i have a, a tenant there and um you know we make rent every month is like a thousand dollars a month it's a little two-bedroom house very profitable um after expenses that that house probably makes six six hundred bucks a month something like that so so you know, is it worth it? Yeah, definitely. It's worth it for a business person. It's worth it. So, anyway, I hope this uh, video was helpful. If you want to send me submissions, send them to get at willmotivation.com. Post the videos to your um, your own YouTube page and send me the link, and then we'll check it out. If it's good, we'll share it with the Motivation Nation. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks for watching today's video. There's a lot more to come. Hit that like button for me and subscribe to my channel. A lot of you guys have been asking me about when is my online course going to be ready? Well, I have good news for you. My online course is completed. Um, I'll put a link in the description of this video where you can click on that link and get a 40% discount off the course. That'll be for the first 50 students. So if you're ready to take the online course that I've basically laid out everything that I know about how to invest in real estate, Click the link below or just go to www.willmotivation.com slash invest. And I thank you guys for taking the time out to watch today's video. Hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.